Let's go back to South End now and Gareth George, who has got news of a very talented triathlete from Northamptonshire. Gareth. Well, yes, all this week on Look East, we'll be highlighting five of our Olympic hopefuls. We'll be following them closely over the next two and a half years. And the first is Holly Avil, a talented triathlete from Northamptonshire, and our guest presenter and five times Olympian Mark Foster went to meet her. For Holly Abel, qualifying for the Olympic Games in China was a remarkable achievement. She was barely 18. Being out in Beijing and seeing, seeing the Chinese support all their athletes and just thinking, gosh, in 2012 we're going to have that and I bet we'll have it bigger and better. And yeah, the ball's definitely rolling and we're getting excited. After all those years of training, it was something out of her control that ended her hopes of a medal. Holly got a tummy bug. She was ill right up to race day. She got through the swim and the cycle, but she just couldn't finish the run. Tell me about Beijing and obviously the disappointment in Beijing. A lot of people kind of approach that question to me with a bit of, oh, is she going to get upset if we talk about it? But obviously I was ill during the race, so I had to pull out, and I was absolutely gutted. But the stuff that I learned around the Olympics, just the whole preparation, being part of Team GB, was fantastic. Holly, at just 19, is the under-23 world triathlon champion. If all goes to plan, London could be her stage to shine. With London in sight and at our home games, it's, it's just such a big goal. Every day it's a goal to get there and really looking forward to it. And I can't believe we're in 2010 already, halfway there really, and probably start to look to qualify next year, depending on what the selection policy is like for triathlon. Doing well in London, doing herself justice there, means everything else takes a back seat. She's even put her degree on hold. I just couldn't give 100% to my degree and 100% to training, and I've only got one shot at London, and I want to be able to look back and say I did everything I could to get A, get there, and B, do as well as I can and hopefully go for a medal. I'm not sure if she's having some trouble here. Holly was really upset about what happened in Beijing, but she's staying positive. She was only 18, and she's learned so much about competing at Olympic level. It's made her even more determined, and that's why she is our one to watch for London 2012. So this swimming pool has already been snapped up by the British diving team. Other pools and athletics tracks in our region could soon attract the attention of other teams. The Olympics is only two and a half years away, but preparations are already well underway. Gareth, thank you very much. And we'll be meeting another Olympic hopeful tomorrow night and through the rest of the week. Tomorrow, I'll be presenting the programme from the Olympic venue at Stratford. We'll take you on a tour around the facility with our guest reporter, Martin Brundle. And I'll be speaking live to Lord Coe, the chairman of the 2012 organising committee. Now, how about this? A girl aged 10 and her brother, who's nine, have both just passed their GCSE in maths. And they both got A-stars as well. Mira and Ram Songara are at home in Luton now with their father. Um, Mira, let's start with you. What is it you like about maths? Um, well, I like everything in maths. Um, there's not one thing I hate about it. <laughs> oh, and Ram, obviously you enjoy it too. How did you get started? How old were you when you both started getting interested in maths? Well, I was five and Ram was four. <laughs> so, <young. laughs> I thought Ram was going to speak then, but we'll speak to him in a moment. Mr Sangara, are you one of those pushy parents who made them do a lot of work? Um, not at all. Um, basically, I just bought them books just to sort of keep them quiet and, like, occupied. And they just sort of took it from there and they just started excelling. And um, I just bought them more and more books to feed their sort of appetite. And they just kept on going and going and it was quite scary. Ram, was it your decision, you, you and Mira, was it your decision to actually take the exam? Yes, it was our decision to take the exam. <laughs> Mira, is Ram going to speak to us or not? <laughs> Can Ram hear us? Can you hear us, Ram? No, I think... Hi. <laughs> oh, hello. <laughs> hello. Um, t tell us about the exam. How, how scary was it, sitting in that room with all the, the older students? It was kind of easy and it was really fun. Oh, it's easy. <laughs> I like that. That's good, isn't it? I've got a couple of questions for you. Can you two do a couple of questions? 
Sure. Yeah, yes. uh, uh, like the first one's nice and easy. Seven eighths. Fifty-six. Fifty-six, yeah. that's correct. Boy. And the square root of 720... No, the cube root of 729. That's harder, isn't that it? That is hard. Yeah, you are working it out, aren't you? Nine nines are 81, and nine eighty-one's two hundred and seventy. You obviously knew that already, didn't I did, you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just there, lives yeah. in his brain the whole time. So, what are you going to do now? Are you going to carry on with your maths? No, we're just going to, like... Uh, chill and go places. <laughs> so you still, although you're so good at this, you still like to just go outside and play and do the things that everybody else does as well? Yeah, we normally do it and we want to do it again. Right, good. Well, congratulations to both of you. You must be very proud, Mr Zongara. We're just over the moon. We're just um, so happy, overwhelmed, really, and um, it's like a fairy tale, really, for us. Um, they just made us so proud. Good. Congratulations to both of you, and thank you so much for coming on the programme okay, tonight. Thanks very much. Oh, great kids. <laughs> um, I won't test you on cube roots. <laughs> <laughs> but I think they can chill and go places, yeah. seeing as they've done so brilliantly. Well done. OK, well, this was Beckles a little earlier today. Rather grey skies, and actually, this was the scene across most of the region. The thickest cloud producing a little bit of light rain and drizzle and an odd flurry of sleet here and there. But for most of us, it was dry but chilly as well, and no signs really of it getting any warmer. Now, you can see what...